by the night when it covers it. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back. You're watching Quran and Science. And the topic of this episode is the alternation of day and night. And uh, as the verse said, Wanahar iza jallaha, walayl iza yakshaha. I'd like to first to ask uh, uh, my dear guests uh, their opinion and the meaning they get, that they're getting behind uh, this verse. So I'll start first by Abdurrahman. I understand from this verse that Allah is telling us that the sun itself is not. Uh, appearing or disappearing but it is the day that shows us the sun and it is the night that conceals it this is mm -hmm. what I understand from it okay and what as, as a human are you benefiting from this alternation of day and night um, in, in the day people go to work and start their lives and in the night one has to rest and have you tried before to um, to work at night, maybe, and 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 sleep in the morning? Did you have did you have this experience before? Mm, of course, uh, I, uh, I had this experience many times. Uh, professionally, you know, in mm. my profession, I have to work sometimes late, and um, it, I find I always find it very difficult to work in the it night. It makes you feel against the. Uh, yeah, the, I feel like I'm defying the law. The creator's law. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, it's it's. Uh, to me, it's, I think it's uh, still a continuation of the oath that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving. Uh, still, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is grabbing our attentions uh, as Muslims uh, to his creation, to his greatness through his creation. And also an invitation to study all these phenomena yes. and maybe to show to the world and, and uh, just tell them this is what Allah says, you know, a long time ago. And this is, uh, we, we knew about it long, long before people start to discover uh, uh, with the modern science, things with the modern science. Moving to uh, Dr. Zaghloul, uh, we need to know your uh, opinion and explanation of this verse. I begin by thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praising his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and uh, by greeting you all in our Islamic way. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, this uh, second verse in Surah Shams is again uh, a direct indication to a scientific fact that was not revealed to anybody until the uh, days of science and technology of our time. Allah says, talaha, And when the moon would follow the sun. And one would imagine, and what's in that? We all know that the moon follows the sun. You see, once, once the sun sets, uh, the night comes and the moon rises, you see. Yes. But it actually it is an indication to the, the direct pre precision of the movement of these two heavenly bodies. Allah has given the sun its own orbit and has given the moon its own orbit, and has given the earth its own orbit. And amazingly enough, everything in that universe is moving in more than one direction. You see, the earth alone has got nine main movements, you see. And uh, what not many people know is that the movement is a spiral. Mm -hmm. It's not in a plane. It's a spiral movement, you see. The moon is moving around the earth in a spiral. And yes. the moon and earth are moving around the sun in a spire. And this is why sometimes you would find the earth in between the sun and the yes, moon. Yes, I'm coming to that. Yes, yeah. I'm coming to that. And uh, really, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, directing our attention to a very important thing. That the, the day starts by sunset. And the, 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 the night precedes the day. And that's why... Um, in uh, English, I can't find a, a proper word for an-nahar, for example, the, uh, other than the, the daylight, you see. So um, we have an-nahar wal yawm, which is different from the English. They use day for both of them, you see. Okay. So in Islam, the day starts by sunset and finishes at dawn time. And these are two cosmic phenomena. Uh, setting the sun is a cosmic phenomenon which you can define precisely by uh, the setting of the disk of the sun itself. And we have several twilights that come later on. We have the uh, red twilight uh, coming as a sign for Isha prayer. We have the yellow and the, uh, the orange twilight, the area in between Maghrib prayer and Isha prayer, you see. We have again the red twilight, which is an indication of the true Fajr. So we have cosmic phenomena that can delimit and can divide the day in night and daylight. So um, 
when Allah says والقمر إذا تلاها it's directing our attention to this importance that your day starts by sunset it does not start at midday as it's commonly used in the world today a midday is, is truly a cosmic sign but it is a local cosmic sign you see it's not a, a, a universal cosmic sign um, but of course once I see the, the twilight uh, of the uh, sunset or the twilight of the uh, Fajr time. These are fixed boundaries which I, I can use very precisely. Uh, secondly, the fact that uh, uh, the uh, moon uh, follows the sun uh, immediately as the, uh, as the birth of the moon comes into being, a new month, a new lunar month has started. And as you were trying to say, if the moon is between the earth and the sun, the lit part of the moon is facing the sun, yes. and the dark face of the moon is facing the earth. And we call this an eclipse of the moon. And once the moon moves out of this straight position, you see, a thin layer of illuminated arch starts on one of its peripheries. So the lunar month is born, and this is a sign of the beginning of a new month, lunar month. And that's why this happens exactly at sunset. If it happens during, mid, during midday or during daylight, the month did not start. If it happened at midnight, the month did not start. Because Allah has limited the beginning of the month with a new day. And this new day starts by sunset. So when it says, والقمر إذا تلاها, means when the moon, is born exactly after sunset a new month has started a new lunar phase has started and then of course we pass from the crescent the newly born crescent to the first quarter to the uh, full moon the second quarter the dying uh, uh, crescent until we get into eclipse so the process of eclipsing and the successive phases of the moon can precisely define the moment of the birth of the moon. If I yes. calculate it wrongly, I can correct it by the first correct. quarter, by the uh, full moon, by the second quarter, or, or by the dying uh, uh, moon. And these are some of the meanings we can get out of the verse. And, and, and is there any religious indication uh, that uh, having the night starting first in Islam? Of course, the Quran uh, repeatedly mentions this: that the uh, the night uh, starts, the day starts by the night, yes. and on many verses, mm -hmm. the day starts by the night, and the dawn is the beginning of the daylight. And uh, so, maybe would that um, like indicate like Abada may start uh, uh, more that, at the night? That's why you see, for as, as I said earlier, if the moon is born, uh, say at noon time, the new month does not start. Yes. You see, I, I will not, for Ramadan, for example, mm -hmm. I will not fast because the day did not begin, mm -hmm. you see. Yes. If the, the moon was born at midnight, uh, then the, the month did not start, not begin. So really the Quran uses these cosmic phenomena of the sun and the moon as ways of dividing time, as a universal clock by which we can define time and we can estimate time. And in, in, in the ayah and the verse, it says, وَنَهَارْ إِذَا إِذَا جَلَّهَا Yes. What, what is the meaning of jalla? This is, uh, again, a, a miracle, uh, a scientific miracle in the Qur'an. وَنَهَارِ إِذَا جَلَّهَا When the daylight will make the sun exposed to the eyesight of human beings. And this is strange, because everybody have the feeling that it is the sun that illuminates the daytime. How can the daytime becomes the way of exposing the sun for us? Only very, very recently we came to realize that the sun in its position cannot be really seen properly. What exposes the sun to us is the thin layer of atmosphere, which is not, not more than 200 kilometers thick. This layer, you find the bulk of the atmosphere is condensed in it. You find plenty of dust particles, plenty of, uh, of uh, moisture, water moisture, plenty of uh, uh, gas molecules. And when the sun rays come in, 
uh, fragmented into its, its various wavelengths, you see. It cannot be seen. Yes. So the uh, multiple refraction and refraction of these rays can join them together to produce this beautiful white light of the day. And once you see this beautiful white light, you can see the sun. So it is the day time that can allow us to see the sun. Otherwise, we cannot see the sun. Okay, yeah. And that's why the verse says, when Nahari the Jallah, when the daytime ha can make you uh, uh, easily observe the sun. Okay. Now we, uh, la let's move for, for a very short break and return back for uh, a continuation of the explanation of this verse. And also, we'll open up the questions to my dear guests. <laughs> the show is to really focus and gain a grasp of those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and those things which will gain for us the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and will make us amongst those who are beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is there any evidence from the Quran that shows that those who repent are beloved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is happier, is more happier with the repentance of his slave than you, if you came across your camel after you lost it in a wide open land. The love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enable us to uh, reach into a status wherewith or in which we will taste the beauty of Iman. We would like to be amongst those who love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. Indeed, you will see your Lord as you see this moon without having any harm in seeing the moon. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back. You're watching Quran and Science, and now we move to Abdul Rahman for his questions. Um, if the atmosphere is responsible for uh, using sun rays in order to illuminate Earth. Is it uh, also able to use the rays of other stars in some way or another? Okay, uh, can I w I'd, li I'd like to ask you to raise your voice uh, a little bit. Okay, if uh, the atmosphere of Earth is responsible for using uh, the sun rays in order to illuminate the Earth, is it also able to use the rays of other stars in some way or another? Um, the rays of other stars can only be used at night. Mm. So we can see some uh, background illumination at night, which as a result of the cosmic particles coming not only from the sun, but also from other stars. But during daytime, uh, uh, the bulk of the energy that illuminates the day daylight is coming from the sun. So uh, it's based on the distance. Uh, depends on the distance, of course, 150 uh, million kilometers between us and the sun. Uh, mm. The nearest sun, uh, the nearest star after the sun, uh, 4.3 light years. Oh. And the light year is 9.5 million million kilometers. You could imagine 9.5 million million kilometers multiplied by 4.3. You could imagine the great distances. Yes. And there are stars that are far away from us, 24 billion light years. 24 a uh, thousand million light years. No. Uh, please. My, my, opinion, my uh, uh, question is about uh, the second part of the verse. وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا يَغْشَاهَا The word يَغْشَاهَا, what, what does yeah. it mean? Uh, you see, الْغِشَاء um, uh -huh. in Arabic is a thin mem membrane. يَغْشَاهَا uh, uh, means to cover up. You see, the light covers up the sun from us, you see. We, we don't see it. Uh, because... Um, First of all, as a result of the rotation of the Earth around its own axis, mm -hmm. we, we can either uh, face the sun or go away from the sun. Uh, so half of the Earth will be illuminated by the sun rays, and the other half will not get, uh, reach, will not get any of the sun rays. Mm -hmm. So it will have a double darkness. The darkness or the shadow of the lit part of, of, of the Earth and the darkness of the universe. So these combined together, of course, will cause us not to see the sun. 
So you want to tell us, the professor, that uh, and the out, uh, away from the earth, it's all dark? Absolutely dark. Oh, so pitch black. Only the layers that you were telling me about. No, no, no. All the universe. No, no, no. Only the layers around this, around the earth that oh, allows the ray. One the, part of this layer. Allows the reflection, the reflections oh. to you one see, part. One part. Oh. Oh. Only two hundred kilometers. Right. You see, after once you uh, exceed these two hundred kilometers, mm. you, you see the sun dark. as a pale blue spot amidst pitch black area. Mm -hmm. Absolutely black area. Oh, interesting. And what makes the moon uh, uh, actually uh, have some light, although the, the light is not... Uh... You see, the moon is simply reflecting the sun rays. And the moon does not have an atmosphere. And because of that, it suffers lots of Im impacts of these meteor meteorites. You see, the, the surface of the moon is all full of these holes. Mm -hmm. uh, as a result of the meteoric impact. Because uh, lacking an atmosphere, the atmosphere can either burn part of the meteor body or burn it completely mm -hmm. or minimize its mass, you see, and that's why the impact would be less as, uh, on the Earth. But lacking the atmosphere allows the impact to be as strong as it could be, you see. Yes. And that's why uh, most of the surface of the moon is covered by glassy material. And this glassy material results from the partial melting of the lunar rocks as a result of that impact. And what actually makes the moon illuminate at night? Because it doesn't have an atmosphere. You see, it, it's the reflection of the sun rays towards us mm -hmm. from this glassy layer on the surface of the moon. Is there any change happening uh, in the sun periodically or at the moon periodically? By the time, by, as years goes by? Uh, change like what? Scientific changes? Of course, you maybe, see. Maybe the luminosity of the sun? Uh... Uh, you see, uh, everything in that universe is aging. Everything. Yes. Humans, animals, plants, uh, planets, uh, stars. Everything has got a, a beginning and an end. Yes. And of course, the moon is changing all the time. The earth is changing all the time. The, st the sun is changing all the time. Okay, and, and the explanation of, uh, of two scientific uh, facts, uh, one of them is uh, where in the morning you may see, or the sun, uh, the, sorry, you may see the moon. Yes. Uh, still there in the, lying in the sky. Yes. But what's the explanation of... Uh, As I said, the, the moon revolves around the earth spirally. Yes. So in that spiral uh, movement, um, you will find that the moon will uh, rise in, in a particular area, uh, at midday, yes, and you can see see the moon at midday, or before sunset, or, or in or the morning. Before sunset, yes. you see, but of course, as a result of this spiral rotation of the moon around the Earth, mm -hmm. so it can be seen at different times in different places. Yes, and what, what about uh, Kusuf al-Shams and Kusuf al-Qamar? The part when 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 the moon is between the sun and Earth, all the Earth between yes. the moon and sun. You see, if you have the moon between the sun between the sun and the Earth. As I said earlier, the lit half of the moon will be facing the sun, and the dark side of the moon will be facing the earth. So we call this lunar eclipse, Yes. the darkness of the moon. Once the moon comes out of this straightforward uh, lineation with the yes. earth and the sun, then uh, the, new, the, new, uh, the month, lunar month is born. Mm -hmm. The moon revolves until it comes, uh, puts the earth between the moon and the sun. Yes. You see, in that position, I usually get uh, the full moon, because we get the uh, light of the uh, of, of the sun face covering the full face of the moon, uh, Al Badr, full yes. moon. Uh, but sometimes you see the positioning of the Earth between uh, the moon and uh, and the sun can conceal uh, the the uh, sun from the Earth completely or partially. And that's why we can have uh, uh, what we call solar eclipse. A solar eclipse can be, again, a partial eclipse, an annular eclipse, or a full eclipse. Yes. And of course, this depends on where you the are position. looking towards the, yes. the sun when the moon is between the, the Earth and the sun. So this is why sometimes uh, you would see it from countries and other countries. Oh, yes. You can, you oh, yes. Can see it. yes. Again, due to this spiral movement, yes. that's not in one plane, but it's in more than one plane. Mm -hmm. Yes, and in another uh, verse, it was uh, uh, that we've mentioned in, uh, in a previous uh, episode. It was about Alhamdulillah, yes. um, 
it, it, also in this verse there is uh, mentioning of the alternation of day and night and we mentioned also that it reminds people when when you're sleeping it's just like uh, dying and you when you're waking is like going back to the day of resurrection yes. Yes. Uh, is there any any connection or any bond between these two verses or does it g indicate to the muslim something barakallah feek well, the, you, you see the first verse alhamdulillah alladhi khalaqa samawati wal ard wa ja'ala thulumati wal nur uh, Allah is showing his bounties that uh, without this careful planning in the creation of the universe, you could have never had that uh, bright daylight, yes. you see? And the alternation of darkness and lit part of the day is an essential factor for the development of life. Yes. Uh, plants, animals, and humans. Um, in plants, as, as we mentioned in the last episode, uh, the, 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 the role of plant in, day, in daylight, in sunshine, is completely different from the role from at the night. night. Similarly with animals, with, with humans, you see, the human body needs darkness for its rest and for the development of certain hormones and certain enzymes to allow the body to rest. And it needs sunshine during the day to produce hormones of activation that will help the uh, uh, various systems of the body to uh, be vivid and alert and, and ready to work. Yeah. Yes. So the, this alternation is again mm. a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. Uh, I do have uh, an inquiry here. Yes. Uh, can we apply, Professor, can we apply this verse, uh, uh, talking about the sun, no. all right, uh, no. on different planets other than the earth? Yes, definitely. Mm. Every planet has got day and night. Mm. Every planet, every, every, even the moon, every moon has got day and night. Mm. Exactly. Uh, and that's why all heavenly bodies are globular. All heavenly bodies uh, belong to a, a star like our sun. All heavenly bodies uh, and these satellites revolve around their own axes and then run around the, the central part, I the sun, you see. Mm. So they all have day and night. But it, it's like, it, it, it's different, like uh, the shortness of the day. Uh, oh, it varies, of and, course. And it varies. It varies yes, greatly, yeah, you see. Yes, see. The closer you are to the sun, the shorter the period, the farther away from the sun, uh -huh. the longer the period is. Mm -hmm. Okay, any, any further questions? Uh, mentioning uh, the moon and the lunar revolution, is it really possible that we have a one day difference between two adjacent countries? You see, actually, the difference is due to ignorance. It's not due to... This is a universal event. It's not limited to a particular area on the surface of the globe. You see, if we have one single Islamic state that governs the whole Muslims all over the world, we will fast in one, exactly the same day and we will break fasting on exactly the same day. Because once the moon has been seen, the lunar month is born. For and all the world. For the whole world, you see. Mm. We only have the local time differences, you see. And the local time differences uh, uh, do not exceed 12 hours between the farthest yes. points exactly. of, the, of the globe, mm. plus or minus. So you use the time differences, you see. So mm. we can have the, the, the sunset here, eight hours for uh, America, for example, mm. you see. I can use that difference. But the moon, once it has, it, it has been seen, the lunar month is born and becomes obligatory on all Muslims to start their fasting. But this birth of the moon has to be after the sunset. It cannot be before the sunset because, as I said earlier, the day of the Muslim starts with sunset and the morning starts with the uh, early hours of Fajr. Why don't we have a sort of an association or a, uh, an entity that organizes uh, fasting for the entire Muslims? In the Pray world? for the unity of the Muslim Ummah mm -hmm. and then this will happen, inshallah. <laughs> Is it something difficult to implement? It's not difficult, you see. You see. I mean, if, if one country sees the moon and then see, uh, and, the that, and, and we consider this definitely. for all. Uh, well, it's a shame that we fast on different days and uh, break fasting on different days. Uh, it's really uh, for adjacent countries. Hajj times is, Hajj, is, is Hajj time the same. We have to follow. Every, everything is the same. It should be. It should have be. Yeah. Saudi, yeah. yes. it? The Hajj is there. Yes. But I, I'm talking about Ramadan and and Eid al Fitr. You see, yes. uh, Wallahi, akhi, it's, it's a shame that we differ on that point, and we know that this is a universal event. If yes. the month is born, mm -hmm. uh, if the moon is born, lunar uh, yes. a new moon is born, <coughs> the month is born. We have yes. to begin that. 
And inshallah, if we uh, become united again in one uh, simple country as we used to be in the past, we will fast on the same day and we'll break fasting on the same day, inshallah. So let's pray for that. And uh, we thank you very much uh, uh, for being here with us. It was a pleasure to have you, Professor Zanrul Nagar. I also love to thank uh, Abdurrahman Ismail and Mustafa Ismail for being here with us. Thank, thank you very much. much. And my dear brothers and sisters, we come to the end of this episode of Quran and Science and see you in the next episode. Until, uh, until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa There is a river in southern Africa that slowly winds its way through a wild wilderness. A wide open region with a diversity of habitats, where the inhabitants are as impressive and powerful as the river itself. By the night when it covers it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. You're watching Quran and Science. And the topic of this episode is the alternation of day and night. And uh, as the verse said, nahar idha jallaha, walayl idha yakshaha. Um, I'd like to first to ask uh, uh, my dear guests uh, their opinion and the meaning that, get, that they're getting behind uh, this verse. So I'll start first by Abdurrahman. I understand from this verse that Allah is telling us that the sun itself is not uh, appearing or disappearing, but it is the day that shows us the sun and it is the night that conceals it. This is yeah. what I understand from it. Okay, and what as, as a human are you benefiting from this alternation of day and night? Um, in, in the day, people go to work and start their lives and in the night one has to rest. And Have you tried before to, um, to work at night maybe and, and, and sleep in the morning. Did you have, did you have this experience before? Mm, of course, I, okay. I, I had this experience. Several twilights that come later on. We have the uh, red twilight uh, coming as a sign for Isha prayer. We have the yellow and the, uh, the orange twilight, the area in between Maghrib prayer and Isha prayer, you see. We have again the red twilight, which is an indication of the true Fajr. So we have cosmic phenomena that can delimit and can divide the day in night and daylight. So um, uh, uh, when Allah says, 
it's uh, directing our attention to this importance that your day starts by sunset. It does not start at midday as it's commonly used in the word today. A midday uh, is, is truly a cosmic sign, but it is a local cosmic sign. You see, it's not a, a, a universal cosmic sign. Um, but of course, once I see the, the twilight um, of the sunset or the twilight of the uh, future time, these are fixed boundaries, which I, I can use very precisely. Many times, uh, professionally, you know, in mm -hmm. my profession, I have to work sometimes late. And um, it, I, find, I always find it very difficult to work in the it night. It makes you feel against the... Uh, yeah, the, I feel like I'm defying the laws the of nature. The law. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's, uh, to me, it's, I think it's uh, still a continuation of the oath that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving. Uh, still, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is grabbing our attentions uh, as Muslims uh, to his creation, to his greatness through his creation. And also an invitation to study all these phenomena yes. and maybe to show to the world and, and uh, just tell them this is what Allah says, you know, a long time ago. And this is, uh, we, kn we knew about it long, long before people start to discover uh, uh, with the modern science, things with the modern science. Okay. Moving to uh, Dr. Zaghloul, uh, we need to know your uh, opinion and explanation of this verse. I begin by thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praising His Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and uh, by greeting you all in our Islamic way. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, this uh, second verse in Surah Shams is again uh, a direct indication to a scientific fact that was not revealed to anybody until the uh, days of uh, science and technology of our time. Allah says, talaha, And when the moon would follow the sun. And one would imagine, yani, what's in that? We all know that the moon follows the sun. You see, uh, once, once the sun sets, uh, the night comes and the moon rises, you see. Yes. But it, actually it is an indication to the, the direct pre precision of the movement of these two heavenly bodies. Allah has given the sun its own orbit and has given the moon its own orbit and has given the earth its own orbit. And amazingly enough, everything in that universe is moving in more than one direction. You see, the earth alone has got nine main movements, you see. And uh, what not many people know is that the movement is a spiral. It's not in a plane. It's a spiral movement, you see. The moon is moving around the earth in a spire. And yes. the moon and earth are moving around the sun in a spire. And this is why sometimes you would find the earth in between the sun and the yes, moon. Yes, I'm coming to that, yes. Oh, yeah. I'm coming to that. And uh, really, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, directing our attention to a very important thing. That the, the day starts by sunset. And the... the, 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 the uh, night precedes the day, and that's why um, in uh, English I can't find a, a proper word for an nahar, for example, the, uh, other than the, the daylight. You see, so um, we have an nahar wal yawm, which is different from the English. They use day for both of them. You see, okay. so in Islam, the day starts by sunset and finishes at dawn time, and these are two cosmic phenomena. Uh, setting the sun is a cosmic phenomenon which you can define precisely by uh, the setting of the disk of the sun itself and we have 